If you saw a little blip in the recording, I was just double checking to make sure this is in focus. You can only do it once. Here we go. I've been given the unique opportunity to test out an Ioptron Photron RC6. This telescope has a longer focal length than any of the refractors I've ever used, and I plan on putting it to good use. The 1370mm focal length of this telescope makes it perfect for galaxy season. I'm looking forward to some large, high-resolution images of my target for tonight, which is M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. With this extra reach comes an increased demand for tracking and auto-guiding accuracy. It makes locating objects using regular star alignment procedures difficult due to the magnification. Although the Photron RC6 will present some new challenges for me, it also means that I'll be taking pictures of a deeper view into space than ever before. This robin is going to go all night. This telescope has an aperture of 150 millimeters, 6 inches, a focal ratio of f9, and a dual speed Crayford focuser. The dovetail bar is Vixen style in the matching red, which I have completely marked up already. The telescope has knife edge baffles all the way through the tube. One, two, three, four, five. There's got to be eight, eight, eight to ten in there. So what that does, it's the little flat rings you see inside the scope. Most scopes have them. Uh, what it does is uh, reduces the negative effects of stray light entering the telescope while you're imaging. So what that does is create an image with better contrast. As you can see, this is where you'll find back focus with the RC6. Now this is useful information uh, if you're using a DSLR with this for the first time because this telescope comes with a number of extension tubes and where I've been able to find focus is with the 2 inch and the 1 inch adapter attached uh, and then it's actually somewhat more like here where I, I was able to find focus. At F9 uh, it's going to be very dim. Uh, so it can make finding a star uh, and finding back focus that much harder, but when you do it's going to be razor sharp. So the camera I'm using tonight is my trusty old Canon T3i 600D DSLR, which is of course modified. And then the filter I'm using tonight is the Bader Moon and Sky Glow, and that's the 2 inch round mounted version. Which I have threaded to the nose piece, a two inch nose piece here. This lens is so wide, I feel like I'm looking through uh, the peephole on a door. On like, a, you know, like an apartment door when you... It may not look that big or that bright, but that's an 87% illuminated moon tonight. Yes, it's clear, but the transparency and the seeing are not looking so good tonight. And of course that bright moon, so that's certainly going to affect the quality of my deep sky image. Not making excuses, I'm just putting that out there now. The way this scope comes out of the box is with a single finder scope bracket on the left hand side. Originally I was having a bit of trouble finding balance with this scope mounted to the CEM60. Uh, it's a little back heavy, especially with the uh, extension rings at the back with the DSLR. Uh, it's very heavy near the back, so I've got the tube pushed as far up as it can possibly go. And then the other big thing was to compensate for the left hand side. Um, I've mounted a second finder bracket with a little 50 millimeter finder scope there, which I'll, I will of course use for star alignment, uh, but it also adds just a little bit more weight and it's a little better balance now. It's actually not too bad. With the tube weight of the RC6 being 18 pounds, uh, with the focuser included. It's not an issue for the CM60 with the 60-pound uh, payload capacity, so I should, be, uh, I should be fine there. No excuses for balance. Ash? Yeah? Did I tell you I got mobbed at Neath? 
Sure he did. For those of you that still use a three-star alignment on your mount, um, one thing I used to do was use the eyepiece to align it first and then get the camera connected. But uh, as long as your finder scope's really lined up with uh, where your telescope's pointing, you can just use the camera, if, as long as the stars are bright enough. For example, uh, I just used the star um, Procyon, and you can see it there in the frame, and that's all you're going to need for a proper alignment. Get it centered in the find, finder scope and then centered in the screen. It's a great way of uh, doing your star alignment. Okay, come on over. This is an RC telescope. So this is a new telescope type that I've never used before. It's called a Ritchie Crutchen and it's super deep. So you know focal length, right? Mm -hmm. It's 1370. Picture how deep that is. So that's looking so deep that like the slightest little movement on the hand controller and you're, you're seeing stars fly because it's so deep. So it makes everything harder, right? And you know how I do that star alignment procedure to, to align everything up? Mm -hmm. You can imagine how precise it has to be to actually get your faint image to show up in there. But tonight it went really well, my polar alignment's perfect. And so I, I this was my test shot on a star. So see that star there? Mm -hmm. That's what I used focus for, that's Dubé in the Big Dipper. And then I moved over to M101, you know that big spiral galaxy one? It's really stretched out, you've seen it before. Do you see it in that picture? That's the first picture I took of a deep sky object. The fuzzy in the middle? Yeah. That's like, I feel like the first time I ever took a picture all over again. Nailed it. <laughs> it is a complete mess in here. Uh, it's just filling up with boxes and equipment and filters and adapters and cables and it's all like I just come out here ransack the place set up and then leave it all and then do it all over again every time I image mainly because it's been just so damn cold out here uh, I can't stand to be out any a minute longer than I have to luckily that's not the case anymore it's spring it's I think it's 10 degrees tonight it actually feels good to spend time out here it feels so good to be back in the game for astrophotography after a rough winter. Oh boy, I'm, I am going to be out here a lot. I did want to talk a little bit about what to expect for those of you shooting with an RC Ritchie Crutchen telescope for the first time, particularly if you started using wide field refractors like I did. I got really used to the ease of use of a nice wide field refractor, very forgiving, uh, easier to line up, easier to focus, nice and fast. The RC is not the case. It's a very narrow field of view. Like I said, it's 1370 millimeters as opposed to say 350. So this puts obviously a greater demand on your star alignment process. Luckily for me, uh, things worked out tonight. I, I did a really solid three-star alignment and my polar alignment was just perfect. I found M101 right away. But if you're not plate solving and you don't have a great star alignment, you're setting yourself up for frustration just locating your object because when you're that deep you can get lost easy. So I just don't want to see any of you uh, get a new RC6 and then just lose a night because you can't find your object or, or something like that. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the importance of pixel scale. When it comes to a scope like the RC6 with that long focal length, it has a very narrow field of view, a very high magnification. So a, a camera with a small imaging chip is not going to be a good fit for a scope like this because it's going to narrow the field even further uh, and you're just going to get a very cropped view of your object. So a camera like the Mono Altair 183M with this little sensor is not a great fit for a scope like this. She's fine. This tiny little sensor is going to create such a narrow field of view, I don't even think I could get M101 in a single image frame without cropping it. ZWO294 MC Pro, the sensor is a little bit bigger, so it's a better fit than the, than the Altair. 
but still that sensor is on the small side so again it's just going to be too narrow. An APS-C size sensor like in my Canon DSLR is a little bit bigger and a much better fit for an RC6 like this. Uh, a full frame uh, camera sensor, DSLR sensor would be even better. That would create a nice wide field of view to, uh, and, a, and a better pixel scale match with a deep magnification scope like the RC6. The RC6 and my DSLR are firing away my three second subs that did uh, happen to be kind of the sweet spot. The histogram is just off to the right there so the subs look uh, incredible despite the, uh, the nearly full moon and the, uh, the light pollution and the bad scene. I think I'll be able to produce uh, quite a decent image here from the backyard. You all know that I'm a wide field refractor guy so this is quite a bit different. I have used uh, a Newtonian reflector in the past, uh, an 8 inch, a big light bucket. Um, to be honest, I find them to be a bit of a hassle. I know there's a lot of you guys uh, that are getting just insane results with them. Uh, Diego Colinello comes to mind when I think of, of, of one in particular. Uh, Eric as well, uh, some incredible results because they are fast and they soak in a lot of light. But this RC seems to be the best of both worlds. No need for a coma corrector. As far as I know, they're not nearly as uh, labor intensive as in terms of um, collimation. No ch chromatic aberration. Uh, my image subs look fantastic. Um, and the price point, I mean, they're, it's affordable. This, in Canadian dollars, this one's under 500 bucks. So I think it's a legitimate contender for uh, entry level or intermediate level telescope. So again, that's just me being honest. I want to thank everyone that uh, took time to say hello to me at NEEF and take a picture and shake hands. That was an incredible experience. I wasn't ready for that. Some really, really nice comments. People asking me about uh, or congratulating me on the marriage, asking how Rudy was. Uh, Condolences, uh, it was just, uh, it was actually, yeah, it was just, it was emotional, it was, uh, it was incredible. What an experience. So, uh, thank you guys for, for coming along for this ride with me to the over 20,000 subscribers. Uh, I do have a day job, but uh, as more time goes on, the more and more I just think about uh, Astro Backyard as a career, which I. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much to, uh, to all the subscribers and for watching, and clear skies.